Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing our channel because we are going to cover each and every topic of geography. Now in today's session on settlement geography, we are going to talk about the morphology of rural settlements also at world and India levels. So what is this morphology of settlements all about? What are various aspects of morphology, its classification and the great scholars who have given different viewpoints. So all of this we are going to cover in today's session. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about this morphology of rural settlements. Now first point that we need to talk about is what is this morphology all about? So whenever we say morphology, for example geomorphology, we learnt about the various shapes and patterns on the surface of the earth. So what is this morphology of rural settlements then? It's talking about the ground plan, the shape because morph means shape and spatial patterns of the various villages. Now why villages? Because we're talking about rural settlements. So villages are the basic units of rural settlements. So these emerge from the spatial arrangement. Now this is the catch word here. The key word is how these morphologies come out on the space through the spatial arrangement of these houses, fields, roads and other land usage that happens in rural areas, right? So basically land use and land cover, when we say, we mean that what is the reflection on the surface of the earth, how it is spatially arranged, right? And study of that is what we learn in morphology of rural settlements, right? So now if you look into this particular map, what you observe, this is a map which is a settlement plan. Now look into the settlement plan of Dadar Nagar Haveli. What do you observe here? This is the road here. And further, if you observe, the road is opening into the by lanes, right? And you have the housing here, housing here, and here, and here. Now what about this? Spacing out of the housing is different in different parts, right? This is what we say is the settlement plan, which talks about a spatial morphology. So if we say what is the morphology of this settlement, it's looking like a cluster, right? The houses are arranged in closed spacing, divided by the roads and the by lanes. Some of them have more spacing, some of them are congested housing. Now this is what we talk about in morphology of rural settlements, that why these settlements are shaped in these particular ways. And already we have talked about the factors of settlements in earlier lectures as well. So what we are going to look here is that how this morphology is in rural areas of India as well as world. What are the factors? What are its various components? So let's understand further that morphology refers to the internal structure or the constructional plan of the village. Right. So what are the key components of it? Remember when we say morphology, these keywords you should associate with it. The size or the area, the layout of the streets and roads, then arrangement of houses, pattern of housing or the geometrical pattern we say and shape of the village and agricultural fields and also the locational factor, the most important factor in geography. So location of either water bodies, religious sites or houses of the village headmen. Right. So these are the certain things that we always talk about whenever we say morphology studies of rural settlements. So this is important to understand. Now further, if you observe that settlement morphology or say rural settlement morphology for that matter is primarily concerned with the layout plan and internal structure. So what you need to remember is three key words the layout, the planning and the structure, internal structure of the settlements. Right. So it's not only the views settled area. Right. But what is more important, not just the physical space, but also what is more important is alongside the socio-economic component. Right. So it's not just about the physicality of the space, the map, the location, but alongside what is the socio-economic factor and how it segregates, disintegrates, integrates, right, all these factors in the development of a settlement pattern. So socio-economic space is as important. So with this comes the idea that morphology of settlement will have two major components. One will be the planning aspect, the ground plan. The other is the built up area, 
right so largely whenever we say physical morphology or simply morphology we mean by this what you see here right in the satellite image this is a clustered settlement with so many lanes roads and the clustering around side so what do you observe this is a nucleated village right so this is one of the examples now let's talk about the classification of rural morphology that how it is branched or classified so first and the evident class is the physical morphology of settlements physical is visible tangible measurable located in a particular place right which we can map on a space so this is what is the physical morphology and it has certain aspects so in the study of relationship that is between the human beings and the rural space, we talk about road to lanes relationship, right? How are the roads and how are the lanes being branched from the main road? We say by lanes or smaller lanes. This is the first relationship. So how are the main roads connected with the lanes in the settlement? That's one aspect. Then the second important is lane to lane relationship that each of these lanes are they interconnected with themselves or are they not connected with themselves right so this is important for example in indian villages lanes are extremely narrow and meandering at many places like it's a zigzag fashion it's not straight line generally and they end sometime abruptly right but if you go to the uk's villages right they are all cutting at almost 90 degrees like this right the trellis pattern of drainage that we observed in the drainage and the fluvial geomorphology that we talked about so similarly here also we have morphology where shape is important right so cruciform at 90 degrees cutting this is in developed nations mostly if you go to europe or uk you'll find this kind of village pattern right so then further relationship is lane to house relationship that alongside that lane how are the houses planned right so geometry of lanes determine the arrangement of houses why because remember houses need the space to grow along the lanes right so in india if you observe mostly we have largely unplanned arrangement of these houses right that's how we observe in the clustered settlement at least right then further the next relationship that we observe is house to house relationship remember this is all physical morphology right so physical morphology is determined by spacing between these houses that's what we say house to house relationship what is the space between two houses how it is separated by lanes or by lanes right so one can be nucleated clustered other can be dispersed where too much of space is there between two houses or it can be semi nucleated semi clustered right in between these two somewhere so that is what we observe so these are the physical morphological components or aspects that we say under classification right so what you observe here that role of geometrical shape becomes really important in identification in the mapping of these settlements right so geometrical shape of agriculture field also determine village pattern and also house type remember in census data we get this pakka houses kacha houses semi pakka kacha houses right these categories right so this also makes up for the morphology the physicality of these rural settlements right now if you observe that not just the physical but again social socio-economic factors also play a key role right how do they play a key role so let's observe social morphology so second aspect of the classification of morphology is social morphology which is very important in creation of these shapes how they are important let's observe social morphology of rural settlements is determined by two factors majorly one is called the caste factors in indian context if you observe and in world context mostly class factor right that's how we say socio economic so class is economic caste is social right so to refers to the social structure of a village where caste and class play a very important role so in indian villages caste hierarchy is reflected in the shape the morphology of the villages right where which caste will live right so this is very important and a very dominating factor in indian context and in western concept class factor high class residential low class residential and later on when we study internal structure of the cities and theories to come we'll observe that how the segregation of the settlements happen alongside the land uses that is determined by class so high class residential medium class residential low class residential and also the landless ones right so social factors like division of work untouchability which was very prominent in earlier times 
now it's slowly going away. Social prohibition over the work of women and lower caste. These social factors led to the specific morphology of settlements, especially in India. Right. So what you observe here that there are certain factors which are very important to understand. For example, arrangement of buildings, patterns of streets and field and functional characteristics of settlement, which is determined by these two factors. Right. So, for example, the houses of higher caste people like Brahmins would largely be in the center of the villages and the lower caste would be outside the villages on the outskirts of the villages. This is a very common pattern if you observe through the lenses of social hierarchy in India. Right. So what you observe? Few scholars have talked about it in certain theories and one of the very famous scholars in India, Professor Kashinath Singh from BHU, he published a paper in Annals Association of American Geographers, which was talking about territorial basis of towns and villages settlement in Eastern UP India. Now this paper gives us an insight into the North Indian villages, right? Where two kinds of theories developed. One is called religious ritual model, which explains that how the morphology of settlement is determined through religious rituals, right? And the second model is called secular dominance model. So secular means for everyone, but remember it's also having the second word called dominance. So powerful people deal with it, right? they have an edge over the powerless people. So these two models of social morphology came into being. Now what is this model? So the first model will be observed that there is a clear cut segregation on caste basis or especially on rituals basis. So religious rituals segregate on the basis of purity, untouchability and several other factors, right? And the second important point in this is that social segregation, social disintegration, right? The differences that we observe was much pronounced during the past favoring the outgrowth of hamleted structure of settlements the hamlet right so the hamleted structure of settlements came because of these segregation social segregation and remember case of compact settlement where outcasts generally lived on the outer parts and the built up area was mainly the majority lived in the central parts were of the upper caste. This is how we say in the ritual relationship. And then further through this secular dominance model, if you observe what has been observed, the old Jajmani system where all caste and all religion came together as functional units. They had segregated functions in the society, right? They lived together, but still the dominance was of the upper ones. Right. So, for example, land owners required the services of landless people. So they had to keep them in proximity, but not as close. That's how the social segregation two models, religious ritual model and secular dominance model played a pivotal role in shaping Indian villages, Indian rural settlement morphology. Right. Then if we look into the West, another scholar called C.A. Doxiadis. Now this Doxiadis is a Greek architect and town planner who was very famously known by that he planned the capital of Pakistan in 1960s that is the lead architect of Islamabad city right. So what he talked about he is also known by father of acoustics. Now when we say acoustics what is it? It's the science of human settlement. So he coined a very interesting word called entopia which exists right opposite of utopia which is ideal state of settlement or ideal state of being. So he talked about entopia that which is right now existing. So these were the concepts given by Doxiadis and he talks about the morphology of rural settlements and its classification in certain ways. So if you observe he classified rural morphology into four sectors right four subparts. So one of them was homogeneous sector right homogeneity principle similarity principle. So it is basically the village core where central part of the village is owned by majorly upper caste zamindars village headmen and community heads right. It is surrounded by own caste people. It means the center of the village is mostly occupied by similar caste people. They are homogeneous in nature right. So this was the first thing. Then there is the second zone which is the transition zone. If you observe this particular diagram there is a transition zone between village core and the circulatory part of the village. So transition zone is occupied by village servicemen 
right? So goldsmith, blacksmith, milkman, weaver, they stay in proximity but little away from these high class residentials, right? So here is the transition zone and this is attached with core of the village where middle caste people are mixed with poor upper caste people. So it's a transition. So basically it also has another name, right? In words of Doxiadis, it's called artisan's zone, right? So artisan's zone is the transitional zone. Then further, if you observe the third part is called circulatory zone, this part, right? This is the circulatory part here. So what is circulatory zone here? It's the outer periphery of the village where new houses, settlers have been coming after migration, they have settled and there is a mixed land use in this area, right? And there is a mix of social structure. Right. This is important. And the fourth one is the special part outskirts of these villages, the rural settlements. What is the special part? It is occupied by landless laborers. They are landless. They work on others land. Right. This gives service to the land owners. So they are outside the village close to the farmlands. Right. They are near the farmlands because outskirts of the village are always farmlands. So they work on the farmlands and they live in close proximity to these farmlands, but they do not own these farmlands. Who is the owner? The owner is living in the village core, right? So work opportunity is there in the outer skirts. And this is how the lower caste people, the landless people live in the outskirts. This is how the Doxiadis classification of rural settlements talks about the social segregation, the social morphology of these rural settlements. So this is to be understood in a perspective of Indian context as well, if you observe, and also in the Western European context as well. Right. So caste and class are the two factors in social economic and the physical factors are in the physical morphology where lane to house, lane to lane, house to house spacing relationship becomes really important. So now when we have discussed in details the various aspects of morphology of rural settlements in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on different other aspects of settlements. So stay tuned, stay safe. Keep watching and learning and don't forget to subscribe and share the videos with others as well.